Jim Koehikawa, aloha. Hi. I'm really glad that you have time to talk to us because I wanted to ask you about the water in the Hale Ma'oma'u crater. A couple of weeks ago, it was reported that at the bottom of what is now Hale Ma'oma'u, which has actually changed a lot in appearance since the volcanic explosions of the summer of 2018, there's water at the bottom of that crater. Give us information about it. Where's that water coming from, do you think? Well, the water level is rising slowly. We can't get real accurate measures of how fast it's moving, but we have a couple of indirect measures that suggest it's rising at about maybe a yard a week. The water is there possibly for two reasons. One is that it's just rainfall collecting down there, in which case it should wax and wane with rainfall. And the other is that this is actually the water table that was there at a higher elevation, but got dragged down by the, with the collapses of 2018. It is now just basically rebounding after the collapse and is coming up to its former level slowly. So far, because the water level is rising steadily and that it's colored so it's not like pure rainwater, the evidence is sort of leading towards groundwater rebounding from the 2018 collapse. But we, you know, we don't yet have accurate measures, as I said, of the depth and how fast it's rising and all that. But we, at least from our observations, it looks like it's steadily rising as opposed to going up and down with rainfall. The water is kind of a milky green color from what I've observed. What are the implications of that? Well, you know, until we get a sample of it, we can't say for sure, but there are many lakes within volcanic craters around the world that have a similar color, and we think that's due to absorption of uh, sulfur from sulfur gas. So, you know, we've been measuring very low sulfur dioxide emission rates in the crater since the collapse last year. And so one possibility is that some of that SO2 is being scrubbed out by the water. It's soluble in water. So the water may be very acidic because of that sulfur content. We are working on uh, some proposals for getting a water sample, either with a helicopter or a drone, and we're working very closely with the National Park to see what will work for everybody. Okay, well, I also understand the water is hot. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, again, we can't get right down to the water to measure the temperature, but uh, we do have an infrared camera that we've been using, for example, to track when the lava lake was moving or when lava flows were active. And so we, uh, I think a week or so ago, we trained that on the water lake. And it appeared to have a temperature of about 70 degrees centigrade or about 160 Fahrenheit. That may be a minimum temperature because the water is so far away from the camera. There's some absorption in the atmosphere, but it's clearly hot. I had read that never before in recorded history had there been water at the bottom of Halima'oma'u, but you mentioned just a couple minutes ago that maybe there was a couple of centuries ago. And I know that one of the things you like to do is go back and look at old Hawaiian writings, old publications, to see what was documented in writing or even orally to give you scientists more information about what happened prior to the founding of Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, prior to Thomas Jagar coming along and keeping more detailed scientific records. So what have you been able to find out about any water that might have existed at the bottom of the crater in any times? Well, as you know, Don Swanson has been working on very detailed studies about how the caldera formed and what its history was, what happened from deposits that are around the caldera. And he found that the caldera formed several centuries ago by collapse, a big collapse, and it was followed by probably three centuries of intermittent explosive eruptions. And studying those eruptions, while working with other colleagues, he found that uh, one possible culprit for why the, some of the eruptions were explosive, at least, was that the magma that was coming up from depth into the caldera may have come up so quickly into a shallow water lake that the magma fragmented and produced these very big explosions as water was flashing into steam. And so that's why we are not quite sure what hazards are posed by just the existence of the water lake. We know that there has been a a shallow groundwater table under the summit for probably centuries now. And 
And even in the last two centuries, there have been many eruptions that occurred within the caldera that have not been explosive. And so we think that based on those older studies and then based on what we know of the recent history of Kilauea, that two things must occur before eruptions will go to explosivity, big explosivity, and that is that magma rises very quickly, which we haven't seen before the last two centuries, and this water lake. And so now we're, we're getting a water lake, but that still isn't enough to have explosive eruptions. We still need that rapid magma rise. Okay, well, so last summer, in the summer of 2018, there were a number of what people called explosions at the summit, but it wasn't really earthquakes. It wasn't really eruptions as we know them. So help us understand how those that happened last in the summer of 2018 would be different from what you're talking about, because when you say there haven't been explosions, how are what happened last summer, summer of 2018, different from what might happen now? Uh, when I mentioned big explosions for three centuries, these were very big explosions that dispersed ash for miles. Um, we have had small explosions, and the ones that occurred early in the 2018 activity were relatively small, even though they ejected ash up to, we think, maybe 20 or 30,000 feet. You know, there was a lot of debris formed in the collapsing in 2018, and we think that debris may have blocked gas emissions. And so those were essentially gas being trapped and exploding out and throwing up uh, debris with it. Um, the explosions uh, that involve water are much different, and they could be potentially more dangerous, simply because you could take an amount of water, you instantly put it in contact with very hot magma, it flashes into steam, and that's an expansion of, uh, I don't know, a thousand times in volume in an instant. Those are very powerful explosions. It's some that we probably haven't witnessed in uh, at least the history of Kilauea. Okay, so to be real clear, though, are the scientists concerned that there could be that kind of really disastrous explosion? Because some of the headlines I've seen since the water was spotted made it sound like we were imminently waiting for a very explosive eruption. But I don't get that sense from you and the other scientists. But let's just make sure we're crystal clear about what to expect. Well, we expect the water lake to keep rising. And until we have some information about very rapid magma set, we're not very worried. Uh, the history of Kilauea, as I mentioned, has been um, relatively moderate magma rise events. So we might get some fountaining. Most of those eruptions started relatively slowly. Even, for example, Kilauea Iki, which had those very high fountains back in 1959, started out as a fissure eruption, just uh, pushing lava down into the deepest part of that crater. And so that kind of moderate magma rise for magma ascent velocities probably are slow enough that any water that is contacted will just slowly turn into small amounts of steam and basically insulate itself from the effect from mixing with more groundwater. I know that there's a lot of study going on still from the summer 2018 eruption along with all the scientific studies you're doing from this water that's now at the bottom of Halima'uma'u. Is there anything specific you'd like to learn? Well, we'd like to be sure where this water comes from. You know, like I said, the evidence so far leans heavily towards groundwater. We have a research drill hole that is about uh, half a mile south of Halimau'uma'u. And uh, so we know the water level in that well. And the lake will have to rise another 50 or so yards to be at hydraulic equilibrium with the water. So if our hypothesis is correct that it's groundwater that's rebounding, that lake should rise to about that same level and then stall or stay there. Hopefully by that time we'll have at least one analysis of a water sample and be able to confirm how much sulfur it has, for example, and how acidic, you know, those lakes tend to be very acidic, um, and whether it has anything else of interest um, in the water.